Last year, solar accounted for 53% of all new electric generating capacity added to the grid. This marks the first time in 80 years that a renewable energy source has accounted for over 50% of capacity additions. And still, U.S. solar capacity is projected to quadruple over the next 10 years. At the same time, the number of new solar installations that also include energy storage is expected to double over the next year. With the extreme growth of battery storage and solar applications, along with large UPS systems and hyperscale data centers and widespread EV adoption, there has been a resurgence of DC power systems. Since unlike AC, DC power does not have a zero crossing point, it can be particularly challenging to interrupt. For this reason, we have to think differently about protecting DC circuits with traditional devices like fuses, breakers, contactors, and switches. All DC protection is not created equally or for every DC application. For instance, photovoltaic PV overcurrent protective devices cannot be used for battery storage protection or vice versa. For this reason, it's becoming more and more important to understand how DC systems in our new energy transition world are designed, applied, and interconnected with the grid. Why do energy transition applications use DC? Because the generating and storage methods are only possible with DC. Even though this power is almost always converted to AC for distribution and consumption, the source of the power is DC. How does this work? Let's use solar as an example. A photovoltaic cell is an electronic device that converts light into DC electricity. A single cell doesn't produce much energy, but can be wired into groups called modules or panels. Typically, one panel will generate less than 50 volts and nine amps. So we connect multiple panels in series, which we call a string, to increase the voltage output. We also connect multiple strings in parallel to increase the current output, and we call that an array. So 10 panels in series will create a string that generates 500 volts, and an array of 10 of these strings can generate about 90 amps. This is how we can take a single panel that can generate about 400 watts and scale it to any size system that we want, from a 5kW residential system to a megawatt level utility system. Battery storage works in a similar fashion, where connecting battery cells in series and parallel can boost storage capacity and system output. This is useful for UPS systems and data centers, as well as electric vehicles. In order to know how to protect a DC circuit, it's important to understand how it is designed. Let's stick with the solar example and look at a schematic of a typical PV system. First is the PV source circuit, which brings generated solar energy from strings into DC combiner boxes. It also includes conductors up to and including the DC disconnect switch. If there are three or more PV strings connected in parallel, code requires a PV overcurrent protective device on each string. This overcurrent protective device will protect the modules and conductors, as well as isolate a string in case of faults. In a grounded DC system, only the ungrounded conductor requires overcurrent protection. In an ungrounded system, you are required to have an overcurrent protective device on both the positive and negative DC conductors. Next is the PV output circuit. Whereas the source circuit contains protection and combination for individual strings, the output circuit does so for the entire array. An overcurrent protective device is used to isolate and protect the PV output circuit conductor. If the PV system contains only one array, the output circuit and the inverter input circuit will be the same. The final combined PV output is then fed into the inverter, which converts the DC to AC. Overcurrent protective devices in this circuit protect the conductor feeding the DC side of the inverter, as well as the inverter itself. Finally, the inverter output circuits connect the PV system to the grid for use after conversion. This part of the system is AC, which is more familiar to designers and installers. All DC circuit protection applications will have a few ratings that we will recognize from AC systems. These would be amp rating, voltage rating, and interrupting rating. There are also some unique differences for DC protective devices, which are specific to the DC application where they will be applied. For example, EV fuses must meet requirements for terminal strength and vibration that are unique to vehicle applications. 
EV chargers use different protection that doesn't require extra vibration testing, but needs to handle higher available fault currents. Energy storage protection must be able to handle the extremely high fault currents available from battery banks and must be suitable for bi-directional flow. PV fuses meet the requirements of UL248-19 and PV circuit breakers meet the requirements of UL489B. These requirements include higher ambient temperature testing, low DC time constant ratings, and an operating class of GPV, which means it is a full range overcurrent protective device capable of sensing and interrupting very low and high fault currents. Additionally, breakers must be suitable for reverse feed and have no line or load markings on their terminals. It's important to note that many of these DC devices are suitable only for their specific application, and they are not permitted to be used in any other types of circuits. Since so many energy transition applications link multiple DC systems together, it becomes critical to understand where one system ends and the other begins. The type of overcurrent protective device you use will be dependent upon which system it's protecting. The biggest example of this is battery storage integrated with a PV system. The most common way to connect the two is a method known as AC coupling. In an AC coupled system, the battery has its own bi-directional converter and the AC power from the converter is connected on the AC side of the PV inverter. There are more inefficiencies in this system as a result of converting between DC and AC twice but it is still a very popular design due to lower installation cost. In this type of connection, it is easy to identify between PV-DC circuits, which must use PV-listed overcurrent protective devices, and the battery storage circuits, which must use different battery storage overcurrent protection. DC coupling is when the battery storage system connects directly onto the same DC bus as the PV system before feeding the inverter. The current from the battery storage system goes through a DC-DC converter before connecting to the PV system. This type of connection tends to have higher initial installation costs, but will be more efficient over the life of the system. It's important to note that the circuit connecting the DC-DC converter output to the main PV system bus is considered part of the PV circuit and therefore must be a PV listed device. Reverse DC coupling is similar to DC coupling, except that instead of a DC-DC converter on the battery storage system, the DC-DC converter is on the PV circuits before connecting to the battery storage circuit. This is the least commonly used design, largely due to a lack of equipment suitable for this application. In reverse DC coupling, PV listed overcurrent protective devices are required up to the input of the DC-DC converter and then everything on the output of the converter is required to be suitable for battery storage applications. Many DC disconnecting devices, including switches and breakers, will require multiple poles wired in series to break the DC current. This may look different than what you're used to on AC circuits, where you have one pole per phase. Eaton has several offerings that are wired this way, such as the solar disconnect switch. Eaton also offers a full line of DC assemblies like panel boards and switchboards, as well as the microgrid controllers which support these applications. And of course, Eaton offers a wide variety of AC distribution equipment to connect your DC system to the grid. As technology and product development evolves and advances, we may see different DC system designs evolve as well. Getting overcurrent protection right on DC applications will be critical to maintaining the safety and reliability of the system. Be sure to use overcurrent protective devices that are rated for their specific application and only use them in those applications. Eaton has the expertise and product knowledge to help you select the right overcurrent protection for all your DC applications. To learn more about DC circuit protection, contact us or your local Eaton representative to schedule a visit to one of Eaton's Power System Experience Centers today.